Hi, I'm Shane Schick for CIO Canada. One of the biggest challenges our readers tend to face is around making the business case. Standing in front of senior management or other stakeholders in the organization and basically asking permission to go ahead with a project or an initiative that's going to transform their organization. To address how to make a bulletproof business case, I have today two CIOs who have been there and done that. Steve Heck is the CIO from Microsoft Canada and Varesh Sita is the CIO of Colliers International. Could we talk a little bit about the kinds of projects that you're working on now in your organization and you know, how you managed to bring that business case forward, especially at Microsoft Canada? Yeah, absolutely. There's two major kinds of projects that, that I'm working on. One is um, projects within the Microsoft Canada business that would need to get um, bought off and agreed to by the, the local executive team. And in other cases, it's um, competing for resources with global, the global Microsoft business to our corporate IT teams. Um, the one that I have uh, in place right now is more local, and it's landing a strategy that um, takes full accountability for the, the technology that we put around each employee. Um, and everything from the first day that they arrive at Microsoft, providing them with all the technology that they need to be productive, and then taking responsibility right through their entire career with Microsoft so that they have the knowledge of how to get the most of it, the, the training, the support, uh, and everything that, that goes along with it. Uh, and in many cases, those function, the, the functional accountability is spread through the business. And so really the, the business case related to that has been aligning all the groups to the vision and then making sure that we deal with any sensitivities around control or budget impacts, et cetera, so that everybody is in agreement and is willing to, to buy into the vision and make the changes as a result of that. Rich, what about Colliers International? What is sort of the, the, the key initiative that you're bringing forward now? I would distill it down to answering the question of if only Colliers knew what Colliers knows. We are a highly decentralized organization, which is our competitive differentiator. Um, so local experts all around the world. And our primary, primary technology initiatives are, is, is around collaboration and information management and trying to get this global community of experts sharing and collaborating with one another to drive increased revenue, to drive uh, business referrals, uh, and cross-border transactions. You both work for uh, large, very busy organizations. One of the challenges we hear a lot from readers is, uh, you know, there's so much going on, and, you know, there's great things that they have to bring forward, but, you know, the response will be, you know, we can't handle that, you know, this quarter. We're still, you know, uh, digesting that company we acquired, you know, recently, or we're opening new branch offices in this geography. How do you find your way onto the agenda of senior management in order to get the chance to make the business case and, and to have it uh, paid attention to? Uh, we, we're an organization that's in high growth mode at the moment. Uh, absolutely without question, we spend a lot of time on focus, making sure we're doing the right things and we're doing the right things well. Um, so we, we're fairly deliberate about what agenda items we, we bring to the table. Um, as an IT leader, I'm also deliberate about recognizing when we have the opportunity to bring things to the table or not, recognizing where the focus is and where the focus should be. So it's really um, being an active participant in the business conversation that's taking place. What about Microsoft, Steve? I think it, it really speaks to the, to the relationship that I have with my stakeholders within the business. Um, the, the better the relationship um, I have with them, um, there's an ongoing dialogue about what the business need is and, and how IT can contribute capabilities to make the business successful. And so the, the greater the connection that I have with my stakeholders, the more it's a natural conversation about what their priorities are and, and what I can deliver back to them. And, and the relevance of IT just becomes a, a natural byproduct of, of that conversation. Uh, probably the biggest objection most people hear when they try to make the business case is we just don't have the money or we don't have the resources. We just can't do it now. Uh, you know, trying to be as reasonable and as rational as possible as professionals. Is there any way to respond to that that might change people's minds, that might be able to uh, create a sense of urgency around the initiative that's being brought forward? Rush, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's firstly philosophically thinking about it that we're not competing for our piece of, of the pie, uh, that we're actually participating with the business to make business investment decisions. Um, that being said, it's um, it's, it's partnering with the business, educating them on the benefits, the business value of uh, some of the technology initiatives, 
Um, it's about inspiring trust, credibility, and confidence, and delivering successes and the business outcomes that, that come with it. And I think the more of those business outcomes we can generate, um, the more you'll find the funding become available. You know, we like to think about it in, in terms of good ideas fly. And uh, if you implement well and implement successfully, mysteriously, the funding appears. Okay. I, I know Microsoft mm -hmm. is a big company with lots of resources, but they also, I'm sure, have their restrictions. How do you cope with that? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I think Microsoft uh, is like any other business, and it's not unlimited resources. But money and resource will find compelling ideas. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's our challenge to make sure that we, that we define the IT projects in terms of business benefit and business language. Mm -hmm. And the better job we can do that, and really really um, uh, define the, the vision of what, what the business, be business benefit will, will deliver, then it's, it, it's easier to gain support, it's easier to, to gain buy-in, and, and then compete with other, other projects that, uh, that might be competing for the same dollars. Uh, the one big problem of trying to make a business case is when you're in an organization that has a culture that is resistant to change. And all organizations have some pockets of this, obviously. But when you know that what you're proposing is going to be disruptive, that it's going to cause processes to be reevaluated, and it's going to make people perhaps do their jobs a little bit differently, uh, there can be objections to even going down that road if the company is already so busy with so many other things. Versh, how do you deal with some of the cultural implications of some of the initiatives that you're working on? Um, you know, the only thing we can guarantee is change. And uh, you know, we take a very structured, deliberate approach to change management. Um, I think it's being deliberate about anticipating the outcomes, anticipating the change impact, and building robust learning and adoption tools, process management tools, change management tools, communication tools associated to managing change. Um, you know, most organizations leave change to occur on its, on its own. Uh, and we're more deliberate about it. I think if you get ahead of the curve and manage the change, you could actually have positive change outcomes. Right. Uh, you obviously are uh, kind of already working on an initiative that is going to have a, a big impact on mm -hmm. sort of the experience that people have. Uh, how do you kind of uh, set up expectations up front so that uh, they'll be properly yeah, managed? Yeah, there's, there's a, a big demand or requirement to socialize what it's all about. I think change management um, out into the business uh, and to the individual employees is all about what's in it for them, what does it mean to them. The, I think the, the people in the organizations that are resistant to change um, uh, are either concerned with your credibility of being able to deliver what you're saying that uh, you can deliver or are not clear on what it means to them. And so uh, what I've really tried to do is, is be really clear and deliberate about putting myself into the, to the shoes of the people that will be impacted by the change making sure that they have a voice and can um, let me know what, what they're dealing with and what they're concerned about so that I can address it. And, and the better a job we do of getting that out into the open and responding to it, uh, the better the, the whole change management exercise has gone. One of the biggest uh, challenges that we're hearing a lot uh, these days is that when people are making the business case, it's not necessarily for something that will just cause change uh, within their own internal IT department, but it's it's going to be bringing in third parties into the mix uh, in order for some of the transformation to happen. Uh, that can be true with you know traditional outsourcing uh, of, of either you know a large or small chunk of their IT department. Um, it could be business process outsourcing, cloud computing. Obviously, people are are uh, talking about moving some of their infrastructure into the cloud, uh, software as a service. In all cases, you know, you're managing new relationships and there is sometimes objections from those who are hearing the business case of, you know, can we manage that? What's it going to mean working with these third parties? How do you respond to those kinds of things, when, especially in your organization? You know, we think about IT services delivery as an entire ecosystem of work. Uh, we live in a connected world with a series of interdependent players. And um, you know, we, have a, we look at optimizing that entire value chain. Um, we, have, we, we rely extensively on our partner network, both internal and external. And um, as, as we present business cases internally, we, we, we spend less time talking about who's doing the work, but really talking about what are the business outcomes we, we're looking to accomplish. 
once we've aligned on the business outcomes, we then look to what's the best vehicle to deliver those outcomes. And that's when we start to look at you know, outsourcing or partner channels and so on and so forth. So there's not a fear of moving to the cloud to call yours or to software as a service or things like that? Not, not, not per se. Um, you know, I think um, the fears will, will arise in as far as um, country-specific uh, legal statutory type requirements in terms of data fidelity and where data resides. But um, as a concept, you know, there's a, there's a high understanding for what cloud computing brings to the table and how it can offer us the ability to scale quickly and, and expand into geographies we, we, we're not in today. I would expect that Microsoft is already moving down this road, but how are you dealing with those kinds of potential uh, concerns? Well, with any outsourcing or, or um, extension of work to a, to a partner, you're, you're um, banking your credibility or you're, you're extending your credibility to your outsource partner. And so it's important that you really do have confidence that, that the, the partner that you pick is going to be able to live up to at the level of service and, and expertise that you have extended to your stakeholders in the past. So it's, it, it is important, but it's, it's one more relationship that you have to, to manage and, and look after. But ultimately, you are accountable for, for the end result. Uh, so it's, it's something that you, you want to make sure you're, you're doing your due diligence, you're working with a, a good partner, one that has a relationship and, and understands what you've signed up for with your stakeholders to, to make sure that they are supporting you and your business. 